Test conductor Dick Prophet has advised that the prime crew is now uh, leaving the suit room and we should expect them downstairs ready to uh, board their transfer van in just a matter of uh, a short time. We are standing by uh, here in the control center for the crew departure at this time. All other aspects of the mission are go. This is launch control. First Frank Borman, also Jim Lovell, and the final man aboard the transfer van, astronaut Bill Anders. They're being joined by two suit technicians, and we expect the door in the transfer van to be closed shortly. Astronaut uh, Deke Slayton, director of flight crew operations, also aboard the transfer van. He'll drop off here at the uh, control center. The transfer van now departing from the manned space. The sequence the astronauts will follow when they arrive at the pad will be as follows. All three will board a high-speed elevator, and the elevator, controlled by the capsule communicator, astronaut Vance Brand here in the firing room, will carry the crew to the 320-foot level above the launcher base at pad A. Actually, this uh, is uh, another 100 feet above the ground, so the level itself, what is referred to as the 320-foot level, is perhaps some 420 feet above sea level. Once that elevator arrives at the 320-foot uh, level, astronauts Borman and Anders will depart from the elevator and proceed along a catwalk to, walk to the White Room. Astronaut Jim Lovell will stand by in the elevator, sitting in a chair. The reason here is, uh, of course, on the crew uh, ingress, uh, Lovell, who is the final man to come aboard, would have a wait of some five or ten minutes in the white room as his uh, fellow pilots came aboard first, so we keep him in the elevator, seated on a chair with a suit technician. The spacecraft commander, Frank Borman, will be the first to go aboard. He will be followed by the lunar med module pilot, the man in the third seat, the seat on the right as we look at the spacecraft, astronaut Bill Anders. The final man aboard, the command module pilot, uh, Jim Lovell. Uh, astronaut Lovell will be called to the White Room once uh, his two fellow pilots are aboard the spacecraft. Still aiming for a planned liftoff time at 7.51 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. This is launch control. So the crew is aboard and the countdown are proceeding very satisfactorily at this time. Checkouts between the spacecraft test conductor and the crew are continuing at this time. We're now at T minus two hours, 29 minutes, 47 seconds and counting. This is launch control. This is Apollo Saturn launch control, T minus 61 minutes and counting. Our countdown is still proceeding satisfactorily. The spacecraft test conductor just has been advised that the area at pad A is now cleared and we will be pulling back the spacecraft swing arm to its park position about five minutes from this time. Tracking checks and telemetry checks still in progress here in the firing room, and all is going well with the Apollo 8 countdown at this time. Still aiming toward our planned liftoff at 7.51 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on a flight azimuth or direction of 72 degrees. This is launch control. This is Apollo Saturn launch control at T-minus 31 minutes and counting. T-minus 30, our countdown progressing satisfactorily. Still aiming toward our planned liftoff time of 7.51 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Here in the control center, we've had our status checks and uh, the range has given a go, as, as has the uh, launch director, Rocco Patron. We are still counting and we are go coming up on the five minute mark in the count. Mark, T minus five minutes and counting. 20 seconds, all aspects, we are still go at this time. T minus 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9. We have ignition sequence start. The engines are on. 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. We have commit. We have we have liftoff. Liftoff at 7:51 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We have cleared the top. Dark clear. 13 seconds. seconds out, we get a loud and clear from Frank Borman. 32 seconds. Booster says the S1C, the first stage, looks good. Mark, mode 1 Bravo, Apollo 8. Mode 1B. The 
crew confirms the, their progress at 50 seconds into the flight. Apollo 8, you're looking good. Carl Roger. One minute out, and Mike Collins tells the crew we're looking good. Mark, mode 1, Charlie, Apollo 8. Mode 1, C. Mile and six tenths into the mission, and uh, Frank Borman has conver confirmed each event as it's been passed to him by Mike Collins at this point. Apollo 8 Houston, you are go for staging, over. The crew has been given a go for staging. Inboard, out, on time, Frank Borman says. The inboard engines, two minutes, 25 seconds. And we see uh, an S1C, the first stage cut off. S2 has ignited, we can confirm. And the thrust looks good. All engines, all sources show the second stage is burning perfectly. Uh, Houston, I read Apollo 8. Yeah, we hear you loud and clear, Apollo 8. Okay, the first stage was very smooth, and this one is smoother. S2, sir, are starting to All right, you understand, sir. And the, uh, at three minutes into the flight, the range safety console has been released at the Cape. Three minutes into the flight, we're 50 miles high and about 10 miles downrange. Apollo 8 Houston, your trajectory and guidance are go, over. Thank you, Michael. And uh, the crew's advisor, trajectory and guidance are looking good, and Frank Borman came back with a very uh, chatty, thank you, Michael. He's talking to Michael Collins, who would be in the center seat today except for an operation several months ago. Five minutes, 20 seconds into the flight. And the crew is advised they look good on the ground for staging. And Borman says, same here. We got S2 cutoff, we got S4B ignition. The Borman confirmed S4B ignition. The thrust looks good to us at nine minutes into the flight. We now have 89% uh, of the velocity required. We're 920 miles down range. And uh, we're nine minutes, 20 seconds into the flight. And the crew has been given a go for orbit and they responded enthusiastically that they too, in fact, were go.